see, Adam, let me tell you a story that would explain why I did that. This goes back in history far, far long ago, today, before today, and it, it starts all with my grandpa, Happy. His name was Jonathan Sir Swiss Young. And what Jonathan did his entire life, his entire life, he was a person who just cleans carpets. That's all he would do. He would just get his vacuum and start cleaning the fucking carpet every day for 20 entire years. And he was telling me one day, and he was like, man, cleaning all those carpets, all that filth, this going into that vacuum bag, you start to wonder about things. And I'm like, what do you mean, Gramps? What do you mean? What do you mean, Gramps? What do you mean, Gramps? And he was like, boy, if you say that one more time, I'll slap the shit out of you. I was like, okay. I was like, okay. I didn't say okay because he was going to slap the shit out of me. So I was, I was okay. I'm going to listen. <sighs> so what he did, or what he told me, he said, what I realized from all those particles, all those little tiny specks of dust, all of those things represents our lives. And all of us are just dirt. Some of us are hairs. Some of us are just big fucking uh, flea things. Like, what do they call those? Carpet bugs. Bed bugs. You know, and those are at the top of our society. So who gives a shit? And then he started, like, strangling me, like, right there. And then he's in jail now. He's been in jail for, like, a, a while. So that's why I uh, <laughs> did it correct myself. <laughs> Roberto, let me uh, let me tell you a story as well. You know, now that we're sharing stories, um, back in uh, let's say what was it? Oh, 2010, 2010, I guess. That's when it started. I used to go on these old forums. This YouTuber that I liked, Nisian. I think I've told you about this. Um, I used to be on the forums all the time. You know, I made some groups of friends. It was nice. We used to go on uh, on Tiny Chat all the time. And go in these rooms, you know, and just hang out for hours. It was cool. I felt like I was part of a community, you know. And there'd be a lot of different people from Tiny Chess, you know. There'd be a core group of people, but you know, there's a lot of different people that would join in and out every once in a while. And uh, there was this one. There was this one guy. So yeah, it's really weird. He was a uh, must have been like 24, uh, something like that, you know, like early 20s, early mid 20s. Kind of like a scraggly beard at all times, you know. Real thick, long black hair, you know, kind of like a like Australian. And uh, he used to come on and tell stories and stuff. And he told me this this, this story about um how how him and his friends used to do whippets. You know, whippets like uh, you take the whip thing and they and they get high because they're stupid and you know kill the brain cells and they're like ah and they're the kids and. Um, and he was telling me how to do this and stuff. <clears throat> and I was like, okay. Um, he said one time when he was doing whippets that he, like, saw things, which he didn't think was, which wasn't, like, a normal thing, but he, like, saw it. And he, 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 like, he, he came out of it. It's a, it's a really short burst kind of high kind of thing. But he came out of it, like, and he had, like, a revelation, you know. And he was, and he was like, you want to know what the revelation is? And I was like, sure, man, whatever. He's like, so I did this whip it. It's like, <laughs> that's my impression of being high. <laughs> and uh, he came out of it, and he, kept, he leans in close to the mic, and he goes like, on the other side, what I saw was these big black letters. And it said, always remember this. Columns are up and down, and rows are side to side. You fucking idiot! Since since we're telling stories, Adam, uh, I think I want to tell you a, a story as well, since that's what we are apparently doing. Uh, you see, I was always a fan of uh, cameras. These kind, you know? I would just open it up, open the cap up, 
take it off because he can't see without a cap. You can't fucking see without a cap, Adam. Because if there's a cap, then the lens is blocked. You really can't see anything. So you take it off. Pro tips. You turn that on, and then you just point. You just, oh, look at that. Look at that pretty thing. Oh, crap. Look at that pretty thing. And that's what you do. That's what you do when you take pictures. And I was always a fan of this. You know, I, this is my first real camera that I ever had. Uh, I got this like a couple years ago. And uh, I, I actually bought it at a store because I didn't know Amazon was a thing. Well, I mean, I knew Amazon was a thing, but I'd never been there and I was kind of skeptical. All right, uh, I guess it, it didn't really... To me, it seemed more convenient to go to the store. So when I, when I went to the store, uh, it was a... Uh, Best Buy, yeah, it was at a Best Buy over, way over there by the street that if I said its name, you probably wouldn't, wouldn't get it all because you don't live with me, <laughs> and uh, so so I went in there, and uh, I saw, saw the guy behind the cashier, I just, I'm a person that goes in stores that like to go straight to the camera and it's like, or straight to whatever I want to get the fuck out of there, right, so I go straight to the dude, because I'm, I'm not going to, like, walk around a whole store like a goddamn idiot, right? And, uh, and, I, and I went to the guy behind the counter, and he said, he said, Hi, how am I help you? Welcome to Best Buy. Or he said, Hel welcome to Best Buy, how am I help you? Cause, yeah. And then, and then I was like, where are the cameras at? And, he, and he's like, come on, I'll show you. And then he walks me over to where the cameras are. It took a while. It was, like, right across the entire store, I think. Anyways, so he showed me the camera, all the cameras. Like he was just going through, like it does this, this, this. I'm like, oh, cool. I read about that. That's neat. And we have a start having a conversation. And then he uh, told me he, he he likes to eat asshole. So right there, he dropped his pants and started like like scratching his ass and start licking it. And if there's anybody in my life that re reminds me of that guy, it'd be you, Adam. It'd be you. Cause you like booty ho All right, okay. I guess we're uh, we're exchanging stories now. You know that's good. That's good. I, I like that. Let me let me let me tell you a story, Roberto. Let me tell you a story. When I was just a wee little lad, you know, I was about two centimeters tall, and I was in uh, kindergarten. I think this story ends in about first grade. So as you can imagine. Uh, like an ant. I mean, it was just, just like, like you think I'm short. And like it was just, you can't, you can't see me. I don't know how I uh, survived, but um. So I was in kindergarten, and uh, you know how it is in kindergarten with little kids. You can't, you no, know, you just make friends. You know, it, it just happens. It's not like I did anything. It, it's just super easy when you're that young, you know? And so this, this kid came over to me, and, you know, he, like, walks, he's, like, on his fucking hands and knees, he, like, waddles over to me, and he's, like, you want to be best friends? And I was, like, fucking, yeah, man, whatever. That's exactly how I talked when I was uh, six years old. I was, like, yeah, man, whatever, sure. And so we were best friends then for, like, a couple of years. It was cool. It was great. I went over to his house, played out, hung, and played video games. It was cool. His name was Lee. He was, uh, he was a little brown kid. He was cool. That's how I know I'm not racist because my best friend was brown when I was growing up. Um, so we have a pretty regular, you know, six-year-old friendship. I mean, as, as deep as you can get at six years old, you know. But then one day, one day I remember specifically, is we were waiting in line to leave after we had eaten lunch at the cafeteria and he was like hey Adam you want to see something and I was like yeah sure man and this was this was like a year or so after so I'd already known him for a while so I trusted this guy I was like yeah man show me what, what you got what's up and he's like look and he just like flips his dick out like he just like just it just like this is his, his trousers. It just, it just, just like it just, 
just it, it was like a little elephant trunk, but like really tiny, just like just bloop, bloop. And uh, I haven't talked to that kid uh, since that day, and I feel like what you just did, what I just found out you did, what you that's what you did. We've reached the tipping point where you. You flipped your dick out at me, Robert. You flipped your dick out is what I'm trying to say. Don't do little elephant trunk. Don't do that. You flipped your dick out at me, and I. Huh. Well, you know, since we're sharing stories, I might as well say mine. You know, I might as well say my story as well. I'll take you back to the very beginning, where all of this, how I became, how how it all just fanned out. pretty much how it became Hey Robert, um, so let me tell you a story about this kid that I used to know. This is in sixth grade. Since we're exchanging stories, I guess you know. Um, so in sixth grade, I knew this kid. This is also a best friend story, I guess. I knew this kid named Andre. Now Andre, Andre was a real fuck up. And looking back, I don't know why I necessarily was friends with this kid, you know? But I used to go over to his house every day, and I was lonely, so, you know, it was cool. I didn't have any friends from elementary school because I went to a different middle school. Um, and one day, it's a long story, but we used to fuck with these kids a little bit um, that were on our street. And one day, I guess, Andre took it too far. Well, we took it too far. And there was a fight a brewing. You see... So Andre starts fighting these kids. Now, see, I almost fought these kids. Well, I almost got fought with. I, I almost got beat the fuck up is what I should say. Because I wouldn't, I couldn't, this, what is, I mean. So I, I backed up. And I was like, I'm not partaking in any of this. And he starts fighting these kids. Now, this is like three or four kids all banging on this one dude. Like, just fucking. And so he got his ass beat. And I was like, fuck. And I, like, helped him back to his house. You know, walked down the street. And I, those guys left. And then we got back inside. We laid down on the couch. And uh, his parents were home. And he, he passed out for about 15 minutes. And then he came back. And it was apparent that he had a concussion. And, uh... I later found out that he had to go to the hospital, and uh, I had never talked to him after that day. Our relationship fizzled out pretty quickly. And, you know, sometimes I feel like I should give you a concussion so that I can achieve the same results very easily. So I could just stop this.